Part of the process of growing any account, and that's definitely been a message that you've been hearing from me for the better part of a month is what kind of environment helps grow an account. And it's really pretty simple. And it, I, I know that it's in many ways feeling like it might be too optimistic or even in many ways too naive. But I'll tell you this, staying bullish all year, even with the volatility that we saw in April, even with the volatility that we saw in August and even in September, you know, we're 10 months. Here we are in October. We're 10 months, you know, going on 10 months into the year. And so far, all but two of them, I believe, have been bullish. We're continuing to hit all time highs. We're continuing to hold on to gains from the year. And it, it only takes just a glance at the year to realize it hasn't been a straight shot up. That's not how it works. But overall, this is where we this is where we started the year. Down here, about what, 4,700 and change on the S&P futures. And we are sitting up at 5,700 and change. This has been a thousand point overall price improvement this year. Now, how do we think about growing accounts? I think a lot of traders, and let's think about the, the trap that a lot of traders fall into. And, and I have to blame to some degree, Hollywood for this, <laughs> okay? And that is really the way in which Hollywood uh, really made a big deal about the movie. And it's a great movie. And it's an even better book, The Big Short, right? The Big Short. And it celebrated traders who said, hey, I found the high and there's about to be a crash. And, you know, I'm talking about the Michael Burry's and the John Paulson's of the world. And, you know, we saw this and thought, okay, that's what traders do. And in reality, it's, it's not something that's quite that uh, dramatic. Uh, it's really the opposite of drama. It's routine. It's repetition. And ideally, it's really boring. So the no drama comes from, hey, I'm not trying to figure out what the high of a trend is. I'm not going to try to pick this, you know, this random level where as we went into August, you know, if, if y'all remember, we dealt with the, the yen crisis, the carry crisis. Am I going to try to time the thing that's unknowable and untimable, right? If we think about what was happening to, through June, July and into August, nobody was talking about some kind of crisis with the fact that the Bank of Japan had at that point hiked rates twice, once at the end of April and again at the end of July. So we'd had two rate hikes from the Bank of Japan and no one was talking about this until there was a massive miss in non-farm payroll that coupled with the Bank of Japan action created the perfect storm, right? And Marky Mark was nowhere to be found. The big short, this perfect storm type scenario, traders are mistakenly thinking that's what it is. So that's what it's not. And, and if, I can, if I can really just emphasize, there's no way to plan for the unseeable. But we can plan for the probable, right? We can plan for the probable. Or as most traders know, we have a probabilistic mindset. And I always have a hard time spelling this. Probable. Listic, there we go. It's a lot of B's and P's. There we go. Probabilistic mindset. What is most probable? And I will tell you it's continuation. Being bullish when there's evidence of strength is what we want to do. Now, I did this lead up because really so much of what traders do is geared towards this idea of mean reversion. Gang, mean reversion has now become Fancy tech speak for I'm going to pick a top because I think the market's gone too high. Be careful with that. I don't mind to buy a retracement. I don't mind to buy into an uptrend that has just completed a mean reversion, but I'm not going to guess at where that is, right? So that's why the lead up into what it is we're going to focus on. Because if you don't believe that probabilistic mindsets are what you want to adopt, if you don't believe continuation is what is most likely, let history tell you. And this is what history looks like, right? There's always a reason to sell. This is, this is going back to 1985, 
to where we are today. There's your Japan, Japanese rate hike. This is, this is the general movement of the S&P. So perma bears are really perma wrong. So let's take an attitude of how do I grow an account? Well, we got to be bullish for the most part. Doesn't mean we can't short and take advantage of it. But if we're looking at the best environment to grow an account, that's going to be to the long side. Where are those things right now? Oil and gas services, energy, oil and, I'm uh, oh, sorry, oil and gas explorers, energy and oil services. These are actually names I would not say are quite ready to be aggressively bullish, but we need to put it on the watch list. We need to put names like Schlumberger, Halliburton, Exxon, Chevron, ConocoPhillips uh, on the watch list. What else is strong so far month to date? Semiconductors and XLK. So if you've been wondering, are we going to see Q3 to Q4 sector rotation? There it is right there. In fact, some of the stronger names in June, July, even July, August were gold miners, staples, real estate. All right. We knew that consumer discretionary is quite strong in June and July, August, really only July, August, September. There was healthcare that was pretty strong. These have all now rotated. Now rotation means what? Taking profit in one, in one place and bargain hunting in another. So you can definitely see going into Q4, it's a different group that's sitting at the top of the leaderboard in October. And if our watch list isn't fluid, we're going to miss this. We're going to still be trading what was, not what is. If I look month to date and contrast that with the last month, semiconductors, metals and mining, technology, and then there's your oil and gas explorers. It's pretty much in line, but what the reason I want to bring up this one month is really to make sure that everyone sees that bullish participation starts with more of these sectors moving higher in positive percentage. You can see this here. Every one of these, including KRE are up over the last month. This is what true meaningful participation looks like. So if folks are saying the markets are bearish, they're too high. That's not necessarily true when you see more and more sectors, disparate sectors. ITB doesn't care what XOP is doing. XLK doesn't care what XME is doing. These are different sectors moving for their own reasons to the upside with only three sectors that are bearish right now. And all and two of three of them Two out of three of them are defensive sectors. So this is not money flowing into defensives. This is not a fear play. And this is why I'm going to continue to say it may not be smooth. It might definitely be rocky, but these are the places we want to be bullish. And this is how we figure it out. And so when we take a look at the S and P in a range, we know it's going to be bouncy. We know it's going to be limited in terms of where it can go until we break above 5830 on the futures. We definitely want to want to be focusing on short term swings off support levels with that expectation of higher follow through. And if and when we break 5840, look out, that could bring that next leg of movement higher. Hey, traders, Ragi from Simpler Trading. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to leave a like and a comment below. And remember, subscribe and click the bell icon so you'll get notified of the next update. And when you're ready to join me for live trading, be sure to head on over to simplertrading.com. I'll see you in the next update.